It's just not right, missus. Letting yourself fall to pieces. Cook and the maid have gone berry picking. Every living thing is out, enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> Even your cat now. He's out there trying to catch himself a bird. And here you sit, shut up in this house all day like some kind of nun. That's no fun. You listen to what I'm saying now. It's been months since you left the house. I shall never leave this house. Why should I? My life is over. He's dead and buried. So am I, buried here within these four walls. We're both dead. Oh, I never heard the like. Your husband's dead. Well, God rest him. He's not coming back. You mourned him, good and proper. But now it's time to move on. You can't sit here wearing black and crying for the rest of your life. I lost my old woman too a while back. I cried for a month. And that was that. No need to sit around singing hymns. And she wasn't worth it. You haven't seen the neighbours for months. You don't go out. You tell us not to let anybody else in. We're all living like spiders in the dark here. If you'll excuse the expression. My livery jacket's got moth holes. Fine if there was nobody about worth seeing. But the whole country's crawling with eligible young men. There's a regiment in the next town. All those good-looking officers melt in your mouth, most of them. And they have a dance every Friday night, and the band gives a concert every afternoon. Oh, missus, take a look at yourself. You're still a juicy young thing. You're still beautiful. You can go out and enjoy life. But a beautiful face won't last forever, you know. You wait. Ten years from now, you're going to want to go swanning after those officers and it'll be too late. I must ask you never to speak to me like this again. When my husband died, life lost all meaning for me. You know that. I may look like I'm alive, but I'm not. I swore I would wear black and shut myself up here until the day I die, didn't I? He'll see what real love means. Oh, I know he treated me badly. I don't have to tell you about that. He was mean and even unfaithful. But I intend to be faithful to the grave, show him what real love means. Oh, that's just a lot of talk. You do better to go out, take a walk. Let me hitch up Toby and go and visit the neighbours. Or oh, Mrs. What is it? For God's sake, what's the matter? Toby. He used to love Toby. Oh, he'd ride all over the neighbourhood on him. What a horseman. Remember how grand he looked on that saddle. Oh, Toby, Toby. Go and tell them in the stables Toby gets extra oats today. Don't worry, I will. Oh, now who's that? Well, go and tell whoever it is. I'm not, I'm not at home to anyone. Whatever you say, missus. You see what real love means, Nikolai. My love will last as long as I do, right till my last heartbeat. I hope you're ashamed. See what a good girl I am. What a faithful wife. I've locked myself up here. And I will be faithful to you until the day I die. Well, you... I hope you're ashamed of yourself, you little pig. You were mean to me. Cheated on me. Left me alone for weeks on end. I was... Mrs. There's someone here. Uh, he says he, he wants to see you. He says he can't wait. Didn't you tell him my husband is dead and I see no one? I did, but um, he doesn't want to listen. He, he says it's very important. And I said I see no one. Well, this is what I told him, but it's kind of a... A wild man. He started shouting. His pushes went into the house. He's in the dining room right now. Right, we'll tell him all right. Really, the nerve of some people. Why must people be so difficult? Why can't they just leave me alone? Maybe I will have to go and join a nunnery after all. What kind of nun I'd make? Gretchen, stop trying to talk me out of here, idiot. Ah, madam, let me introduce myself. Gregory Stepanovich Smirnov, field artillery retired. I own a place over in the next county. Sorry to disturb you, but this is important. What can I do for you? I had the pleasure of knowing your late husband. And as it happens, he left me two IOUs, which come to a total of 1,200 rubles. Now, I have a mortgage payment due tomorrow, so I'm going to have to ask you, madam, to pay up. And I'm afraid I need that money today. 1,200? <laughs> what did my husband owe you the money for? I sold him some oats. Oh, Luca, don't forget what I told you. Make sure Toby gets his extra oats. If my husband owed you the money, then, of course, I'll pay it. 
but you'll have to excuse me. I don't have any cash on me here today. My manager will be back from town the day after tomorrow. He'll see that you get paid, but today I'm afraid I, I cannot help you. It's exactly seven months today since my husband died and... Oh, I'm in a sad mood. I'm in no condition to talk about money. And I'm in a sad mood too, because if I don't meet my mortgage payment tomorrow, they'll seize my property and I'll lose everything. You'll have your money the day after tomorrow. I need the money today, not the day after tomorrow. I have already said I cannot pay you today. And I have already said that I can't wait until the day after tomorrow. What can I do since I don't have the money? That means you won't pay me. It means I can't pay you. Is that your final word? That is my final word. You made up your mind? I've made up my mind. Thank you very much. I'll make a note of that. Am I supposed to take all this lying down? On my way here, I'm at my accountant. Why are you so down in the dumps, he says. Well, excuse me, he should know. I'm desperate for money. I got up at dawn yesterday. I rode around to everybody I know who owes me money. Not one of them paid me. I ran in more circles than a hunting dog. Spent the night in some godforsaken flea pit of a hotel. Finally, I get here, 50 miles from home, expecting to be paid, and what do I get? A sad mood. What kind of mood do you think that puts me in? I think I made myself perfectly clear. I will pay you as soon as my manager gets back from town. I came to see you, not your manager. What the hell, excuse my language, do I want with your manager? My dear sir, I will not have such language in my house, nor will I tolerate that tone of voice. I refuse to listen to any more of this. I don't believe this. Seven months today, my husband died, and I'm in a sad mood. What's that got to do with me? I have to make a mortgage payment. Fine, your husband's dead. Your manager's gone to town. You're in a sad mood. Whatever, what do you expect me to do? Run around and bang my head into a brick wall? Fly away from my creditors in a balloon. <sighs> I go see Grushchev. He's not home. I go see Yurosovich. He hides. I go see Karitsim. and get into a fight. Damn near throw him out of his own window. Go see Mazutov. He's sick. And now this one has a sad mood. Not one of them has paid me. Bunch of parasites. It's all because I'm a soft touch. I'm a fool for a hard luck story. I'm too nice for my own good. Well, it's time to get tough. Nobody's going to fool around like this with me anymore. Damn it, I'm not moving. I'm staying put until she pays up. Oh, I'm so mad. I'm mad enough to get nasty. Hey, you! What do you want? Glass of water. Better still, a beer. What kind of logic is that? Here's a man so desperate for money he's ready to hang himself, but she can't pay because, excuse me, she's in no condition to talk about money. Talk about petticoat logic. This is why I don't like women. This is why I hate talking to them. I'd rather sit on a barrel of gunpowder than talk to a woman. They make my skin crawl. They make me so mad. All I have to do is see one of those romantic creatures coming. I break out in a cold sweat. I want to start screaming for help. The madam is sick. She says she can't see anybody. Get out of here. She's sick and she can't see anybody. Fine. She doesn't have to see me. I'll just stay right here until I get my money. She stays sick for a week. I'll stay here for a week. She stays sick for a year. I'll stay here for a year. I want my money, madam. Your black dress and your dimples don't impress me. I've seen dimples before. <laughs> hey, Semyon. Semyon, unhitch the horses. We're not leaving just yet. We're staying right here. Tell them in the stables to give my horse some oats. Watch out, you're getting the trace horse tangled in the... Just wait until I get... Wait! Oh, Jesus, what a mess. Hottest day of the year. Nobody wants to pay me. I couldn't sleep last night. Now I've got to deal with some widow and her moods. I've got a headache. I need a drink, that's what I need. Waiter! What do you want? A shot of vodka. Oh, I'm a mess. <laughs> Dirt, mud on my boots. I need a shave. My hair needs combing. <laughs> Straw sticking out my pockets. A lady probably thought I was out to rob her. <laughs> Not too polite, I suppose, showing up like this. What the hell? I'm not a guest. I'm a bill collector. Nobody said I have to dress right. <clears throat> you take too many liberties, you know that. What? Nothing. Just nothing. Who do you think you're talking to? Just shut up. Oh. So mad. So mad. Mad enough to blow up the world. Mad enough to get nasty. Hey, you! Oi! My dear sir, I have lived so long in retirement, I have grown quite unused to the human voice, and I cannot stand shouting. 
I must earnestly beg you to respect my solitude. Pay me my money and I'll go. <sighs> I have told you in no uncertain terms that I have no money here at the moment, and you will have to wait until the day after tomorrow. And I have told you in no uncertain terms that I need the money today, not the day after tomorrow. If you don't pay me today, I may as well hang myself the day after tomorrow. What can I do since I don't have the money? You mean you're not going to pay me, is that what you mean? I can't. In that case, I'll stay right here until I get it. You're going to pay me the day after tomorrow? Fine. I'll be sitting right here. <sighs> Look, don't you believe I have a mortgage payment due tomorrow? Do you think I'm joking? I asked you not to shout. You're not in a stable. I didn't ask you about a stable. What I asked you was, don't you believe I have a mortgage payment due tomorrow? You haven't the faintest idea of how to behave in a lady's presence. I do know how to behave in a lady's presence. No, you do not. You are ill-mannered and vulgar. No gentleman would speak like this in front of a lady. Oh, pardon me. Just how would he speak in front of a lady? In French? Oh, madame, je vous prie. How charmed I am to know that you refuse to pay me my money. Pardon, am I upsetting you? Oh, what lovely weather we're having. My, don't you look exquisite in black? You're being very stupid and not funny. Stupid and not funny? I don't know how to behave in front of a lady. Woman, I have seen more ladies in my time than you've seen sparrows in yours. I fought three duels over ladies. I've walked out on 12 ladies. Nine ladies have walked out on me. Oh, I used to be an idiot. Got crushes on them, whispered sweet nothings. Clicked my heels, bowed and scraped, fell in love, suffered, sighed in the moonlight, froze up, melted into puddles. I could rattle on for hours about women's rights. I wasted half my life on women, but no more. Dark eyes, red lips, dimples in the cheeks, moonlight, sighs of passion. Nah, I won't give you tuppence for any of it anymore. Present company accepted, of course, but uh, all women are pretentious, affected, hateful, gossipy liars to the marrow of their bones. Vain, petty, merciless. They can't think straight, and as for this part here, why, excuse my frankness, but a pigeon has ten times the brains of any philosopher in skirts. When you look at one of these romantic creatures, you see an ethereal goddess, an angel walking amongst us, and take a look at her soul, pure crocodile. The worst part of it is, this crocodile thinks she has a monopoly on the tender emotion of love, damn it. Has any woman ever known how to love anything except her lapdog? She's in love, all she can do is snivel and whine. A man in love, he suffers, he sacrifices, but a woman? Her love shows up how? She swishes her skirts like it's a firm grip on your nose. You have the misfortune to be a woman, so at least you understand what a woman's nature is. Tell me honestly, have you ever seen a woman who was faithful and true? No, you haven't. The only honest and faithful women are old or ugly.